Mm. I'm Chris Allen of Game Keto. Do you have a web browser and a text editor? Because if you do, then you can start programming video games immediately. So the game we're going to make today is a classic, real simple stuff. Because of course the purpose isn't to make this specific game. You've got all the features though that are going to be the underpinnings of every game you're ever going to make again. You'll learn to handle motion and collisions and bouncing. A little bit of simple artificial intelligence, that paddle on the right side moves entirely on its own. How to handle input, like moving the mouse to control this paddle. You're going to see all that today. And the technology we're going to use for that is HTML5 JavaScript. And it runs in a web browser. So I'm showing it to you right here in Chrome. But it would work just as easily if you prefer in Firefox or in Internet Explorer. If you're on a Mac, you can use Safari. If you're on a Linux box, most of those web browsers will probably support HTML5 Canvas by now as well. And even though I'm saying HTML5 Canvas, really our game programming is going to be happening largely in JavaScript. HTML is short for Hypertext Markup Language. And HTML is how people format standard web pages with headers and paragraph bodies and bold and italics text. It's like for designing a newspaper or a magazine layout, but for the web. And that is what all browsers across all computers are interpreting, including even smartphones, all use HTML to display their web pages. Now the problem is that for dynamic content like a video game, where you need motion constantly happening, you need complex logic going on for your gameplay, you need real-time mouse input, for that to work, you need something a little more complex than just laying out text on a page or images on a page. And so what they've added for HTML5 is something called a canvas element. And this black rectangle within which the game is taking place is actually a canvas element on a web page, a pretty plain, simple, otherwise empty web page, that then we use JavaScript within the HTML to bring to life. So all the actual logic and motion is being done in JavaScript. So even though this approach is called HTML5, really 99% of the code we're going to write today isn't actually HTML at all. It's going to be JavaScript embedded into our HTML. I'm just going to right click on my desktop. Let me zoom out a little bit. So you see here, it's just a normal Windows view. Nothing fancy. This black area is just my desktop. I'm going to right click and say new folder. Just a place to put this stuff. Like I say, you can do this on Mac, you can do this on Linux. It's probably what's great about HTML5 JavaScript is the games you write here are instantly cross-platform. You can just run on other computers trivially. Okay, so we got our browser, we got our folder on desktop, and inside this new empty folder, I'm gonna create a new text file. Right click, new. Now, I wanna create a new text document. And if you're on Mac, of course, you probably just by opening up a plain text editor, something like text edit, make sure it's set to plain text, and just save the file. But on a PC, you can right click, go to new text document. We don't want a Microsoft Office Word file, we don't want an open document, we don't want a rich text document. Those will have complex, messy characters for formatting and layout information. We just want a file that's just letters in it, which is what the text document is. Now, when I create this, notice how it says .txt at the end. Let me zoom in a little bit in case you can't see that. It's showing the .txt at the end because my, my file extensions are shown. And by default, most modern operating systems hide that information from you. So if you're not seeing the .txt, you're going to want to turn those on if you're going to be a game programmer. Now, the way to do that differs by operating system and version. So you type in your operating system version to web search, just search for show file extensions after it, and you'll see a number of simple three, four step tutorials, one minute tutorial videos on how to make this change. It only takes a minute to do and undo. What it's going to do is expose to you the type of your files. And what I mean by, de by default is hidden is that a casual computer user doesn't necessarily care whether an image's format is .png, .gif, or gif, or .jpg. And they don't care if a sound file is a wave, an aug, or an mp3. They just need to know if it's an image or a sound. As a programmer, you have to see that file extension because when you reference it from code, you need to reference the full file name, including that extension. Additionally, there's a few situations, as you'll see very soon, where we're going to actually rename the file extension on a file to change how it gets interpreted by a browser or other things that we're working on. So, in general, it's going to help to show those extensions. And if you share the computer with somebody else who doesn't want to see them, it only takes a minute to flip them back off when you're done. I'm going to rename this file, which you can press F2 on Windows or right click and go to rename on a Mac, click on it and press enter. I'm going to call it game.txt at first. I'm going to open it up in notepad, which is my default text editor when I double click. Any plain text editor will do. If you have something like fancy like sublime text, which you see down here, that'll also be great, but notepad gets the job done. And we can type any text that we want in here. Chris Deleon was here. Okay, simple stuff. I press control S or you can go to file save to save it. And now I can view this text file in my web browser by just dragging it from my file system onto the viewable area of my page. And I can see Chris Deleon was here. 
Now, the foundational idea of HTML has to do with tags. So I can say like this text is thick because it has an open bold tag, B is for bold, and a close bold tag, the slash is a close, and I, I is for italics, this text is slanted, slash I, and this text is normal. I control S to save or go to file, save in the menu. And this is just the real simple, real straightforward, plain HTML kind of stuff with open and close tags, where the text between here will be seen as thick and bold. Text between the I tags, open and close, close as the slash, will be slanted or italicized. And now let's see how that looks in the browser. I can refresh it here. The first time I click this, though, I'm going to see those actual typed characters. I don't see bold and italicized text. And the reason for that is because this file's extension is .txt. The browser is looking for that end of that file to be .html to know what to do with it. So let me close my file from Notepad because I'm about to rename it. And here's what's going to help that we have the file extension shown. I can right click, go to rename. I don't want to change the word game at the left of the period. I want to change the txt on the right half of the period to .html. My operating system is going to warn me. It's like, Chris, are you sure you want to do this? Because that's going to change what programs think you're trying to do with this file. And I'm like, yeah. We're game programmers, we know what we're doing. Trust us, yes. We have this new file. I'm gonna drag it onto the browser. We haven't changed the contents of the file at all. And bam, right there, you can see plain as day, we have our bold text and we have our italics text. All right, now we wanna open that file back up again in a plain text editor. Now, if you double click on it, it might try to open it in a web browser like Internet Explorer by default, but you can usually go to open with, select notepad or choose default program. Worst case, workaround, if you have to open up Notepad first and then go to File Open, you can get to it that way. We can go to File, we can go to Open, make sure that the type isn't just text documents, but all files over here. And you could then get to your file that way. But you want this edited again in a plain text document. And again, notice it has the same contents, we just changed the end to .html. And yet it's being shown different in the browser because that extension tells the browser what we want to do with those tags. Now HTML has some other stuff that it really wishes we would put there for it. So like, for example, um, let me move this down or up a little bit into your way. All right, so for example, formally, it kind of wants an HTML at the top and the bottom. And there's some other information it wants that actually tells it which version of HTML we're using. Make the bottom and a closed version. But we're not too worried about that here. It might throw an additional warning in Firefox because we're missing some stuff indicating that we're not using Chinese or Greek character codings or other kind of fancy stuff like that. Browsers are pretty forgiving because they're used to people writing incomplete, hacky, sloppy web page stuff. So we don't have to worry too much about that. The reason for all this, though, is that what we're going to do for our games is use the script tag. Script and script. And these open and close just like the bold tags do. The only difference being that between them, it's no longer HTML we're writing. We can't put bold and italics text in here. We can't put headers and paragraphs in here. This is for writing JavaScript code, which is going to be logic, control, flow, code, which will mean functions and variables and all kinds of stuff you're going to become familiar with pretty soon through what we're doing. An example of your very first line of JavaScript, though, will be, hello, world, exclamation point. I'm going to go five press control, control S to save or file save in the menus. And then let me walk you through what we're looking at here. Again, between the open script tag and the closed script tag is JavaScript only. No HTML can be in there. I've indented the code. Indenting is actually optional, but helps readability for programmers. The computer doesn't care one way or the other. But it makes it easier for me to see where our code is versus the HTML around it. Console log is a built-in script command on the JavaScript uh, browser's interpreter that allows us to post messages to our error log. I'm going to show you where that is. That's why we're doing this. It's going to be a very important part of programming games in this way. In the parentheses, we give it what's called an argument, which is the information that we want to send to that function to do something with. And we could change what's in these quotes to be any words we want. We could say, Chris Delion was here. We could say, I'm now programming games. We could say, oh my god, did it work? Anything you want between these quotation marks, you can put there. And then, to close the line, we have a semicolon at the end. Now, the semicolon is technically optional. Uh, in JavaScript, it's not required. The browser will usually fill it in for you. But most modern programming languages that look a lot like JavaScript are actually requiring of it. So Java and C++ and processing and ActionScript 3, they share a lot of structural familiar, uh, similarities to this kind of programming, but they require the semicolons at the end of every instruction. So it's a good habit to get in. You'll see a lot of JavaScript programmers encourage other programmers to use these because even though they're optional, 
It's just a good habit to be in. So I'm going to save that file. I'm going to refresh it in the browser. And I didn't see any change. Let's, let's change the text at the end of it. Uh, new text added here. Okay. Control S to save it. I'm going to refresh in the browser. Remember too, if you're not seeing your file at all, make sure you've dragged it over since you've renamed it. All right, so tennis game, drag it over. And we're seeing new text added here. So this is definitely the newest version of the file, but the difference being that we're not actually seeing that hello world statement. Where it went is the console log. And to get there in Chrome, I'm gonna click on this grip in the corner, this little three lines thing. I'm gonna go down to more tools. And then I want to go to the one that says JavaScript console. And then right down here on the side, I will see hello world game.html colon five. That five means that it's online. Five of the code is where that statement comes from. And hello world is the phrase that I picked because since the 1970s, this has been the first thing that most programmers of any programming language display to the screen. So if you did this with me and you're following along, and I encourage you to, if you're not, welcome to the club. You've just joined in with the rest of us game programmers. Now, this will work in any other browser as well, but how you get to that console for the JavaScript is a little bit different. So here I've opened up Firefox. I'll drag my HTML file onto it. I once again click this three line grip in the corner, but now I go to developer, click on that, and now I choose something called web console instead of JavaScript console. And I'm seeing there's my hello world, game HTML, colon five, again, line five from the game HTML file. And then I'm getting this warning of the character encoding is not declared. So this will be trouble if I use characters outside the US ASCII range. This means if I have Japanese or Chinese or Greek characters on the page, it might confuse the web browser how to display it. Pretty harmless warning we can ignore. You see it's yellow for a warning, not red for an error. We'll let this slide for now. There's a way we can fix that with some additional HTML information, not a big deal. And now over in Internet Explorer, there's a little bit of a quirk to how we're gonna have to do this. I'm gonna drag it onto our page. And once again, so you see it right there. Now, first off, Internet Explorer is being cautious. Lots of people have taken advantage of Internet Explorer over the years and made it a way to distribute bugs or run otherwise malicious scripts. So it's warning me, it restricted it from running scripts. Do I want to allow it to run scripts? Remember, we're using all this in a script tag for JavaScript. So yes, because that's what our game is, allow blocked content. Now, let's say, how do we get to our console? I click on the gear, F12 developer tools, and we won't actually see it here. And the reason is because it tried to display that before we opened the console. Internet Explorer works a little bit differently than Chrome and Firefox in this regard in that it will only display a console log if the console was already open when the code ran. So now that the console is open, I can refresh the page, clicking up here, pressing F5, and down here we'll see, same deal, hello world gets printed out in the console log, which is exactly what we wanted. Now the console log isn't just uh, for displaying messages we want to print out to ourselves as programmers. And there's a number of reasons we might do this, by the way. We might surface information as we're programming. We can print out numbers we're trying to debug. We can print out where the code is going if we're not sure if a, if a part of it's being activated. But it's also the place where we will see errors. So let's say I was typing this word and I made it a typo. I left off that E. That's going to be a problem because it doesn't know what console without the E is. Let me save that, refresh in the browser. And now instead of seeing hello world, I see uncaught reference error console is not defined game HTML line five. This way, no matter where you make errors in your code, if you have a typo somewhere, it'll tell you what the word is that's offending it and what line to look in and which file. So if you're used to other programming languages and you're just coming to JavaScript here, this is kind of like your compiler. This is your errors or feedback. Now, if you get these, they'll come up all the time. Don't feel bad. You're not doing something wrong. You're not a bad programmer. Part of programming is just dealing with errors that crop up each time you work on your code. So whenever you see these, don't feel, like I say, don't feel bad. Don't, you know, beat yourself over it. I've been doing this stuff for 15 years. I still see errors all the time in that console log. So we have our program console log opening and displaying the message. There it is. And in the next part of these videos, I'm going to be showing you how to put up that black canvas and start to get some action and graphics happening on it. Talk to you more in a sec.